Today I'm going to explain a little bit about upgrading a video card and why you might want to do so and what two types of video cards are on the market right now. Now, let's imagine you have an old computer. Uh, a computer that maybe your mom or dad bought or maybe that you had purchased quite a while ago. Let's say when it was running Windows XP. Um, it is, those computers would have been back in 2002 to you know till afterwards um, old computers if taken uh, care of well are still running and they run fine they do all the work you ask them to do basic word processing uh, browsing the net etc but they can slow down they slow down because basically they weren't they're not uh, designed to keep up with today's uh, programs and uh, 3d usage and such now there's no reason to throw that computer away, especially if it's still working well. What you could do is you can maximize the RAM. Older computers um, might have three or two of uh, RAM slots. So what you can do is you can increase the RAM. Now if it's running Windows XP or Vista 32-bit, you can only, uh, those programs only see a maximum of 3.25 uh, to 3.7, 3.5 gigs of RAM if you're lucky. Typically it only sees 3.25 gigs of RAM. Meaning if you were to populate um, the computer with four, or let's say if it has four DIMMs open, if you were to put in four gigs of RAM, it wouldn't make much of a difference. All the computer could use is 3.25. So, what else can you do to help the computer perform better? What you could do is you can add a graphics card. Now, the computer here, this motherboard here is actually pulled out from this computer which I had just recently upgraded to totally new components and which I am using Prime 95 right now to test. Uh, I was actually successful in unlo unlocking a core so the customer ended up with a, uh, a dual core processor instead of a single but more on that later in a different video. But it's just um, being a uh, stress test right now. Make sure that it doesn't shut down. But the motherboard that came out of it was this. This has an AGP expansion slot here, designed for an add-on graphics card. Now, the customer was using onboard graphics, so meaning he would connect his VGA here, and he would get graphics, you know, a display. What he watched movies, DVDs, you know, whatnot. It was probably very laggy, but it was able to be done. Now, this motherboard is shot basically so but let's imagine that it wasn't let's imagine it just came to me for an upgrade I would basically upgrade his RAM to um, 3 gigs of RAM and I would add on an AGP card because <coughs> uh, that is the expansion slot here AGP uh, slot cards run slower than today's PCI Express here and as you can see they are different they look different a PCI Express card is, I have one to the left here from HIS. As you can see, the connectors are not the same. The top card is an AGP card. The bottom card is a PCI Express card. You can see the top card has three basic connector points. The bottom card has a big uh, connector with a small one to the left. So the AGP card will not fit in a PCI Express card our PCI Express slot and a PCI Express card will not fit in an AGP slot as you can see it just just doesn't line up so this card is not what this card is not going into here this is my test card but basically what a video card is is it has its own processor here under the heatsink in here and it has its own video RAM so pre prior or previously, the customer is using the onboard graphics uh, chipset here, in here, and he only had one gig of RAM, and that one gig of RAM was being used for video, operating the system, and running programs. That takes quite a bit of total processing, so the main processor had to work quite a bit. Now, if you if uh, you add a graphics card here in the AGP slot. What you effectively do is you add it on own, its own graphics processor, channels all video rendering, and 
it has its own set of memory here and here. So no longer does it pull away memory from your main system. Effectively, you have a blue miniature computer here helping out the big computer, which substantially increases system performance. In that way, an older computer can keep up with today's basic usage. The same holds true for um, a computer you buy at the store. Computers you buy at Walmart, Best Buy, most of them are generic onboard uh, video cards, just like this one here. It's an onboard video card. And again, this principle holds true. It would pull away a memory from the main system, and the main processor would be doing a lot of the work. If we were to add this PCI Express card, we add a little processor here and memory here. We would attach it here and effectively adding a little miniature computer to help out with a good almost half of the, a quarter of a, or half the, uh, the workload on this uh, main board here. So that's a little bit about AGP cards. But do they still sell them? Yes, they do. AGP cards, they do sell but they're pretty expensive, especially for what they offer. I have a customer who came to me for such a request and I have ordered the uh, ECS Elite Group's GeForce um, 6200. It has 512 megabytes of GDDR2 and a 64-bit bandwidth for memory. It has, it um, does work with AGP 8X and 4X, so and 2X, it does throttle. So that is verified on the website. So this uh, video card is going to actually help an old computer run a little bit better. So this is gonna be a little bit of an unboxing video too. So let me just uh, unbox this real quick. Lay the camera down. So take a quick look here. Okay, what do we have here? So we have the box, we have a user's manual, multi-language, the VGA driver, now it is important to use this disc. You can't really use, a, you cannot go on to NVIDIA's website and just download uh, PCI Express drivers expecting this uh, old HGB card to work, it won't work. Uh, there are hotfix drive, uh, drivers and there are specific drivers for AGB cards, so that is important to remember. I'm going to just basically take the uh, card out of the stag bag and show you what it all encompasses here. So, this, uh, this card has a long aluminum heat sink. Underneath it, um, it the heat sink does not, I don't think you can see it, but I can see it. The heat sink does not come into contact with the memory. It only comes into contact with the GPU. Okay. And it's a passive heat sink, meaning it's not gonna, there's no fan on there. Um, so you definitely wouldn't be able to overclock this car. But it has DVI, S-Video, and VGA out, which is very nice. Um, and what was particularly important in this case is that it has, and the reason why I ordered this particular card is that it has low, prio, low profile brackets included. And we need that for the upgrade that's, uh, for the upgrade because it is going into this ancient Dell Optiplex uh, computer. And there's plenty of these Dell Op Optiplex computers left. They run very well. so. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. It should uh, should work out pretty well as long as it didn't come uh, DOA, and it looks like a pretty decent construction. So, uh, see you next time for updated videos on the core unlocking and uh, other technical tidbits.